Good morning, everybody. And we have Paulette here in her patch, and she's got another scrap quilt to show us. And this one, I believe, is called Monkey Wrench. Right. Okay. <laughs> Take it away, Paulette. Okay, so Monkey Wrench is a very traditional pattern. Uh, only has nine pieces. And the two quilts that I'm showing today, uh, we're going to be making these monkey wrench blocks and we're just going to be turning them on point ah, so that okay. you get that little uh, look like that. So it looks completely different than when you sew the block together. Okay. So if you're when were they called the name monkey wrench? I have no idea. It does have other names like hole in the barn door and uh, a few others but yeah. i think i remember it as monkey wrench. i remember it as monkey wrench i just think yeah. you know like is there a tool called a monkey wrench i have no <laughs> idea i don't actually do tools okay so <laughs> okay okay so this is a, a a pretty easy sewing job so you can just dig into your stash i used a uh, muslin background for this one so um all of the wrenches are dark or medium fabrics and in the other one I used a dark background so I needed lighter and medium uh, wrenches for that one. So what you're going to need for the uh, background is two four inch squares and five two inch squares and for the wrench part which is that part you're going to need three four inch squares and one of them you're going to cut into four um, two inch squares. Of course, if you have a chunk that you can get these two out of and then a strip, you could cut these individually just yep. as long as you can get two four inches and four two inch squares. Okay. So, and what does the block finish at? This block finishes at I'm going to say seven and a half inches. I'm just trying to remember six. Uh, yeah, probably seven. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't actually uh, practice see. these. Seven and a half seven inches. Seven and a half inches. Finished. There. So it is eight inches here. Okay. But it's seven and a half finished. Okay. Sorry about these surprise attack questions That's that okay. I'm giving her this morning. That it's wasn't Monday. That was the instructions. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, this, we haven't done this before in our little presentations, but we're going to be making half square triangles today. So this is the first time uh, we've shown that. So half square triangles, my favorite method. Now there's lots of different methods out there on the internet and uh, different designers do them different ways. But what I do is, where are my pieces? I can use these. Is that you take your two bigger pieces, the four inch pieces, and you're gonna layer them together, right sides together. And whichever is the lighter fabric, you're gonna draw a diagonal on that and then you're gonna sew on both sides of that diagonal. So there's my drawn line and there's my sewing. And is that a side. scant quarter inch or a full quarter that inch? That is a scant quarter inch. Okay. I feel that it's the outside of this unit when I'm finished that needs to be perfect. Okay. So it isn't, um, the seam in here is not as crucial as long as it's sewn well. So okay. I do scant. And so for each time you layer those two things, you're going to get two half square triangles here. So then they're going to look like this. I pressed all of mine towards the dark. So in this quilt, I pressed towards the dark, which is the wrench. And in the darker one, I pressed towards the background because it's darker than my wrenches. Right. So for this unit, you just press towards the dark. So after you've got this sewn, you're going to have a piece that looks like this and it's pressed and you've got these little dog ears on the end and it isn't quite the right size. So you do need to square it up to the correct size. So I love, uh, actually if I'm sewing, pressing towards one side, I love the block lock ruler because it has a little ridge in here that butts up against your, your seam and you can slide it up and down and then um, trim your square to exactly the size that you need. So for this, you're going to be trimming to three and a half inches. And um, 
I like this method because once I've got it cut, I'm not pressing it anymore. I'm not handling. There's no way to distort it. Right. It's it's just a square, and it has either straight of grain or cross grain on all the outside edges. No bias edges on the outside. So you're going to trim these to three and a half, and then you've got all the little pieces that you need to actually put it together. So we are going to let's move. <laughs> That's easy, eh? <laughs> so there is a picture in the direction, so you're going to be setting it together like this. Oh, I didn't deal with those little pieces. So you do have these smaller pieces, so you need to sew those to the other uh, white or the background pieces so that you end up with units that are are like that. Okay. So they're like this. And again, I press towards the dark. Okay. So I have these little units. So now that I've already made these, I've got those. And so you're going to set it up just like a nine pack. You're going to sew that row together. Then you're going to sew this row together. It has one little guy in the center. That's the guy that didn't have a mate. Sew that together. And then the last row is the same as the top row, just upside down or right side up. So there it is laying out. So sew this row, sew this row, sew this row. So when you press, I press this first row towards the outside. So going towards the outside of the block. I sew this, these two seams here towards, press, sorry, not sew. I press those towards the inside. So it does, I, it didn't matter if it was light or dark in the center, that center seams, those two little center seams have to go towards the center. Okay. And then this one again is pressed towards the outside. Okay, so, so just like a, just like a normal nine patch block. Yeah, yeah. And then when you sew these two long seams to make your block, I press those towards the center. So I guess you can see it on this one. This is Paulette's favorite color, red. Red. <laughs> yes, she does love her red. So, and I'll just come in a little closer so you can see the seams. Yeah. Okay. So what that does is it gives you two, uh, two seams that are towards the center and two that are towards the outside so that you can nest these. So you would match this one that's going towards the center with one that's press towards the outside and so every block that you attach to each other is the opposite the seams are opposite and they nest nicely okay okay and um so again <laughs> this block is on point so what we've done is taken this nice little block that we made and we've turned it that direction so that um we get a completely different look but again we need setting triangles on the outside to fill in these spaces for these diagonal rows. So there's a handy dandy book called No Math Quilt Charts. And in it, you can go in and find, and I think it's on page 24 for me. So I use this quite a bit. And it tells you what size to cut these setting triangles. In the directions, I I tell you what size, and I say cut um, from 12 to 14 inches. So if you cut 12 inches, you are going to have just a quarter of an inch on the outside from these points. And I always find that a little... Um, it's a little more difficult to work with, right? I'd rather size down because you can't size up, right? Yes. So you can get three 14 inch squares across with the fabric so i always cut 14 and then i can trim this wherever i need it right. so this one has maybe an inch be from that point to the end but the quilt above has got more like um an inch and a half inch and three quarters so those were cut even a little bit bigger perhaps so you need five of these and then you're going to cross cut those twice and of course you need little corner triangles on the outside edges. So those are cut uh, anywhere from six and a half to eight and a half. And I always cut them a little bit bigger, sew them on, and then I can um, 
square up my corners nice and easily there. Um, the top quilt for the setting triangles, uh, I used a different color. So it's almost like a little border on the outside edge. And um, I did that because I ran out of the black. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's a um, design feature it's a design feature but i think it looks okay you yeah. know it was in my stash so i thought okay i'm going to use that um these two blocks here i they were actually rejects from the quilt because i don't think there's enough definition enough difference in them yeah so i didn't use them so sometimes you know when you're making something it it you need to kind of think can i do that or should I, like this one is a little bit light in this whole quilt, but I thought it does have some dark bits, so I was okay with putting that in. But with the, with the dark quilt, it was very tricky actually to get enough different colors that were going to show up nicely. But I think it turned yeah, out just Yeah, it fine. turned out really well. You mean your stash isn't quite big enough, Paulette? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Monkey Wrench, it's, it is a smaller block, but they sew up so nice and quickly, and it's, uh, you can just throw a whole bunch of different things in there, and um, because you've got, you know, because you've got these big, uh, showy uh, designs here, and the one thing I think, uh, if you kind of look at these quilts from a little bit of a distance and squint your eyes, you actually will really see these these yeah. little dot dash dot dash things going across the quilt and in the dark one it it it's quite once you look and see it there then you almost don't you always see it there yeah so it's kind of an unexpected little fun thing that that happens with this wow well, now what color of binding would you use on the top one on the top one I have no idea yet. Maybe it would be a scrappy binding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have any of this black left, so yeah. I, I can't use that. But I'll, I'll find something when the time comes. Yeah. And this one, I just had uh, muslin. I just used muslin for my background because I kind of wanted that little bit of antique look. Yeah. Because the design is so traditional. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to try it. I really love this one. I really do. But then, I mean, I'm a traditional quilter, so I like seeing what the traditional <laughs> yeah. quilts can do. And like I say, Paulette is fearless. I mean, she will put batiks <laughs> and Christmas and baby and all sorts of stuff all together. Do you ever mix flannel into your into your squares along uh, with batiks and regulars? I mix batik and regular cotton all the time. I, I don't mix flannels. I usually keep them all together because I think their weave is a little different. They shrink a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't do that. But yeah, fair enough. But you could. Yeah, you could. <laughs> that, that's for another day when we've got, you know, more nerve than what we've got today. <laughs> so, okay, Paulette, what a great project. Thank you so much for sharing with us, and I hope you guys all enjoy. Remember, I cannot for the life of me figure out how to attach the directions, but I do have them in the store. And you can always email me at info at fabricshelf.ca, and I will email you the PDF. Okay, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.